Hey everybody, this is Daniel Kano with Breakthrough Your Art, and I have another wonderful artist interview today with Diana Gracida, Mexican-American artist from Los Angeles, California. And I got to meet Diana about five weeks ago, four weeks ago, at an art opening in Hermosa Beach that I was part of, and she was part of a, an art opening about florals. And I loved her work, just so dynamic, expressive, colorful, like just forward thinking. And I'm really excited to have Diana here on the interview on the call. Diana, welcome. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'm so excited to be speaking with you further. Um, I spent so much time looking at your website and having the ability to talk to you in person and see the work that you've created at the art show. I found your work to just be so captivating. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks. That's flattery. You may yeah. made it. <laughs> oh, well, very good. You're making my day by, by having this interview and to be able to talk about your work. So, yeah, very much so. Tell me um, about how, how did you, are you uh, an originally a Los Angeles artist? Did you come to LA um, from abroad? Can you tell me a little bit about kind of your backstory about how you came into making this kind of graphic artwork that combines photography, collage, and a lot of very large kind of concepts and ideas? How did that come about for you? Oh, thank you. Well, it's a long story <laughs> that we need several coffees and maybe beer or wine. <laughs> but, uh, well, I just came to this country. I study photography. I study graphic design in Mexico a uh, full career. And I uh, concentrated a lot in photography because it was, I just discovered it was my passion. Uh, so, but I always did both. So I did my make a living out of branding and graphic design. So that's why you see a lot of digital and graphic stuff in, in my art. But I always did on the side, always did photography and my clients always needed photography too. So, but for me, for my own sake, my own sanity, I always did collage. And that was at that uh, a teacher taught me back in the days because I never been an amazing sketcher. You know, I'm not the best drawing person, even though I'm a graphic designer. <laughs> but you know, and he taught me a lot of ways to cheat and a lot of ways to not cheat, but use different techniques for, you know, for expressing whatever you wanted to do. So I use a lot of cotton paste uh, magazines, and also when I learn photography printing everything and, you know, spoiling a lot of prints because that's how you learn. So I had all these prints of my own photography. So I used to cut and paste my own photography and make uh, uh, compositions with it and use them in my in my projects as explore, like explaining the project, uh, you know, at, at the end of the presentation. So I always captivated people's attention because it was a different uh, way of presenting projects and then it just uh, it just embedded in me and just gave me a lot of tools because I wasn't uh, limited to what my hands uh, could do back in the days because now we didn't I didn't learn with computer stuff so then and when I had the computer with me and the programs and those um, learning skills I was like, wow, this is amazing. I don't have to struggle so much uh, to you know, find the perfect hand and cut it forever. And yeah, you know, so, but I always kept it. I always wanted to keep that uh, hands on uh, spending time on, on a piece and and really releasing the, all the emotions that you do when you are thinking about something as creating something you are kind of like going through all these emotions good, but you know, whatever it is, so you are pouring all that content into whatever you're creating. So Can that's you... story. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a, it's a great story. The, the evolution of your work of, of going kind of with commercial and with hands-on work. What is your preference right now? Do you prefer more that as far as your personal expression, is it the hands-on, the cutting, the pasting, the playing with different materials, or is it more so um, being on the computer and digitizing and modifying through the different programs? Well, I, I think it's a, a, a lot of both, but I'm right now I've been having like six months of truly exploring more hands-on. 
you know i i'm because i'm i'm in the computer a lot so i, I just i get out and everything but i want to create with my hands too i do it with the mouse so and and i i just uh been trying to explore that more so that's why i've been bringing already my created piece cut and paste piece digitally to cut and paste in hands so i'm doing kind of like a 3d work that is uh it's really simple actually but it creates a, a lot of depth and i love shadows in photography i think that that brings a lot of um you know, like a three-dimensionality to spaces mm -hmm. when you a good shadow. So when I create the three D pieces by hand, those shadows are there because we always have lighting mm -hmm. everywhere. So when the light is moving, it's creating different shapes. So it feels like the piece is alive. So I'm I'm creating a lot of that, and I can show you later some other techniques I wanna use. I wanna incorporate nature, like. Um, I love plants, as you can tell in my work. I think I have a green thumb. <laughs> and uh, so I'm collecting all my dead leaves and, you know, I'm doing different techniques to, to keep them alive. Oh, uh, so I want to incorporate that in my art too. So how will you incorporate that large leaf into a, a piece of your art? Well, I want to use the mirror too so to create a layer with uh, you know a mirror and then the art behind and also i want to cut the art like let's say i can show you this that is in progress this is a piece that is already intervened it's a uh, desert and and kind of like a very foliage part flowers so i want to incorporate maybe making cutting some part of the flowers and putting the um, the leaf behind. behind. So the, the flowers, the, the image that you're showing in your left hand of the, the flowers and that whole thing, was that created in a similar fashion of, of having a plant or having leaves and collaging them together? Or you're kind of, mer are you merging two, more of the classical photos. graphic design with, with the yeah. actual physical pieces? Well, yeah, this is a double exposure made on Photoshop, you know, uh, so it's only two photos. It thinks that I, it looks like that I did a lot, but no. So that's what I try to do. My pieces, they look like that I work so much, but what I do is I really study each photo. And I know since I've been forever working with photography, I know which which one is gonna go with which? And I just apply like a single, like a simple layer to combine the two photos, you know? And this is created. And I love that because I get surprised by my, um, my, my own self. I get surprised like, whoa, how did I do that? <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's really refreshing when you are working with photography. So, so, so when you were, if you're to merge that leaf with that beautiful photograph, that you created on in Photoshop, what what is, what is it that you're going for? What are you trying to create as you create this kind of mixed media pieces using nature and people and, and different objects? Do you have a goal in mind or is this more intuitive that you play as you go? Well, it's, uh, uh, my goal overall is, is definitely intuitive and I flow a lot when I'm creating, but my goal is to give more sense to people for like, you are in nature. It's not only a printed piece. You know, I want to really bring people to like, I touched the piece and I was uh, like, if you were in nature, you were experiencing that, that uh, moment of like freshness that nature gives you. So incorporating some, even though they're dead, is some pieces that you can bring with you when you travel or when you live in these places that you can keep in your house. So kind of like bringing this uh, freshness of how, what we are, because we are nature. Uh -huh. Right. So either card and in, like introduce it here, or I also want to do like a background around, you know, putting a lot of leaves around and creating like a frame. Oh, that's beautiful. So yeah. you're, you're, it's, 
your goal, it sounds like with all of this work is to really create this sense of immersion for the audience and for, your, for yourself into nature, into self-discovery, into just kind of having some more joy in their lives. Is that right? Yeah, well, I, I, I do this for myself, so I want to share. I started creating a lot of art just for my own sake or because I had certain feelings and I just didn't know what it meant. So I just started creating stuff. And when I saw it on paper, when I saw it, you know, created and finished, I was, wow. And just exploring and watching, those are the feelings that it came out from my hands. And, mm -hmm. and then some of them were not so pretty or happy feelings. But and, when and you so tell me, tell me more about that, where you have some feelings that are happy and some feelings that are unhappy. How does that, that kind of full expression, how does that dynamic aspect influence the work that you're creating and, and the, what you want to create when you think about your next pieces and so forth? Well, I get, I don't know, maybe it's the way I am, maybe Aquarius, I don't know, but <laughs> I get a lot of um, inspiration when I'm in my dark place. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I just uh, learned with time in my life that that also is a good part of you. If you explore your dark feelings or your sadness, that really you have to explore those places to be able to come out of it. So my art sometimes is very, it, it could be dark, you know, it mm -hmm. could be uh, comfortable. Right now I'm showing you a really happy pieces. <laughs> yeah. But I sad pieces, like, but for me, they're not sad because they brought me, I could understand better yeah. and I could heal from it. So I can show you this piece. So this is oh, it's gorgeous. Maybe um, let me avoid the. Um, no, you. Yeah, you're on the screen there. So tell us. So it sounds like this piece here is kind of a mix of the two. There's there's definitely a big emotional component to it. Tell us about it. What's going on in this this photograph with the ocean coming out of the eye? Yeah. Well, it's not an ocean. These are clouds. Oh, okay. Uh, I now I can see that better. Yes, these are clouds, and it's kind of obvious. And the title is "I don't cry anymore." I I have clouds in my eyes. Wow. <laughs> so it's it's too much of the crying that I just don't create tears anymore. I just have the clouds there. <laughs> That's um, a, a beautiful yeah. expression that that you're putting out there. This 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 ability to create these these surreal images where you're, you're transposing nature and humanity. Yeah, what? well, um, that's something that I, for me is, I think when, when you really explore those feelings and kind of also laugh about it, uh, mm -hmm. or not just not, not laugh, but kind of like, oh, look, I was so sad that I could create that and now it looks pretty. So how can I bring that to my life? How can I bring that to my mental health? And so we can emerge and create something beautiful out of something that is maybe painful. Yeah. And, uh, and for me, when I created that piece, it's like, wow, you know, clouds are amazing in, for us because they create uh, rain and rain creates right. light. So for me, it was a lot of learning watching the piece all together when I finished. And exactly, these are two photos together, that's it. One photo is the eye of my son, and the other photo is a cloud, but I took it black and white, so the sky was super blue, and then when yeah. you turn it it, it turns into black, like totally black. So why, when I impose the two photos together, here, I have a print here. The black just disappears. <laughs> yes, this is a print. So just the cloud could be hanging on the part of the tears. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. It yeah. has such a such an esoteric and such a sculptural feeling to it that like mm -hmm. the face itself, you know, ha feels like more on a um, two dimensional plane. But then you have these clouds that are coming out of the mm -hmm. eye or the eye is recessed behind the clouds. 
is that it's a it's a really great um, capacity you have to combine these different mediums together. What who what and who influenced you to be able to work this way and create this body of work that is, you know, kind of stretches between surrealism, between shadow work, between fairy tale, like, mm -hmm. do you have specific influences or times of scene work that influenced you to create work like this? Well, I'm Mexican <laughs> and we have a very uh, colorful uh, culture and very um, graphic and rich and dark as well you know the day of the dead and everything it's like we mexicans were brave and um, a little bit messy and creative so i think i brought a lot of influence from my own culture and uh, and traveling as well you know i i was studying for one year in spain mm. uh, in what part of Spain were you? In Madrid. In Madrid, oh, very nice. Complutense University. Excellent, excellent. What what influenced you in Madrid? Well, I studied there a lot. I mean, just uh, art. You know, the um, I really love the classical uh, art. I, I used to spend a lot of times in El Prado Museum, so mm -hmm. I. Really of I incorporate a lot of uh, human uh, figures in my in my artwork because I as part of as like getting remembering that we come from nature and we are nature so I, I always want to incorporate this human part to to nature and not just uh, feel that we are separated from it uh, that we have it within so I cannot tell you precisely exactly what, but I was was uh, interested on um, like mixed media, like getting out of the comfort zone a lot. When... Tell, tell, me, tell me more about that origination of getting out of the comfort zone with your artwork. Well, I realized when I was studying that when whenever I presented a project, because it, it was always like a contest, you know, when we are studying graphic design, the, the best project was like, wow, she's amazing and things like that. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm competitive, but for me, it was a little bit boring following the whatever was doing, everyone was doing. So I was trying to push buttons and, and it really worked. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So time no I'm not gonna present anything on paper I'm just gonna dance because I used to be a dancer too <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna dance and then at the end I'm gonna recitate a poem and they were like no but we gotta see the product you know the product is a concept <laughs> so um, I really like that uh, just uh, making people think a little more and just get out of because it's the it's it's difficult when you get out of comfort zones and you you play this is is kind of like a dangerous feeling but i also like adrenaline as a surfer so it's it's like a game of art pushing buttons adrenaline <laughs> and you know i can get in but trouble pushing buttons pushing buttons <laughs> travel and adrenaline that's a really great dynamic like conversation that like exists within you that you're able to put out into your two-dimensional artwork and your three-dimensional you. artwork, because your work does bridge between two-dimensional and three-dimensional, right? Yes, yes. So, yeah. so I want to explore more of not leaving just um, a printed piece. I really want to explore uh, more into put hands on. And also, I, be, I just go a lot to uh, art galleries, and I like to get influenced. A lot of people oh. are doing a lot of stuff, mixed media, using pieces of wood, and a lot of texture art so i'm influenced by that and i my art has already texture but it's flat and i want to bring more depth to it uh like that you want to feel like touching it <laughs> very nice diana what do you what do you feel like the the main purpose is for you as an artist right now in your life to bring forth into society well awareness awareness of of your own feelings um bringing that to the surface and exploring uh self-healing mm -hmm. and beauty to this world because we're full of bad news 
Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, hope as well for young people. Uh, so I, I like to use a lot of nature because nature makes you happy uh, and also teaches you a lot. Nature really teaches you resilience, uh, strength, uh, letting go as well. And just, uh, it's, it's beautiful. The, the seasons of the year, you know, they all serve a purpose. So for me, it's, I sometimes I call it healing art. But I, I don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> it's it's one of those words as artists we have to dance with that art in itself is therapeutic, is cathartic, can be healing for the soul, for society at large. But we're artists, you know, so yeah. we put ourselves out there in a way that makes us vulnerable and allows other people to see their own vulnerabilities. The, yeah. You talked about your art being able to give hope for others in this kind of world, this crazy world we're in with so much like bad news that you referred to. So how do you get your artwork out there for uh, to inspire others? Well, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a progress, you know, as, as an artist, you, you exactly know the, what I mean. But uh, as we have these social media platforms that sometimes I struggle with because it's a, full-time job i just uh use it to my to my benefit and i just take it you know little by little but i what i do is more um uh, connect with people mm -hmm. connect like we connected together in that um uh, gallery and this is amazing after that connection now we're here sitting together and having a nice yeah. talk so that for me is really important so i just go to places and meet people and have try to have many meaning, meaningful conversation and of of course also a laugh and <laughs> and you know, just talk, talked about my art and just uh, you know i think it's also applying for galleries for shows mm -hmm. with friends that i have uh their artists and maybe creating something together uh, a show group or something so i uh, it's a working process but I'm definitely, um, I have my online store that I'm launching this week. And, you know. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but tell, tell us more about your what you're launching this week and how people can see your artwork. And I'm interested also in what you have going on in the future. But since you talked about the online store, like tell us more about how people can see your work, find your work so they can have it as part of their life. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing um, this um, crucial moment for me. Um, well, in my, I, I want to sell, I, I, I believe in original pieces, uh, but I want to give uh, more, uh, you know, uh, flexibility for people that they, they don't want to buy or invest right away in, in a big piece or in an original piece. So I'm creating um, uh, prints, you know, a small, a small round of prints for for my animals. and sometimes I, I i won't make an original I'll just make a print so i want to create this this kind of a, a special editions and you can find those on my website and you can also see i mean reach out to me if you want the original but um it's hard to uh to show the original piece on my website because you you know as you as you experience is better when you see it in real time. So that's why I'm trying to get into galleries that appreciate my work. And yeah, they can follow me on Instagram too, because I have a lot of surprises there. And, and tell, us, tell us what your website name is and your Instagram handle. My website is called Nana Studio, N-A-N-A studio.com. Instagram is my name, Diana Gracida. Um, at Diana Gracida, or you can also find me as Nana. As Nana, and tell me about the word Nana. Where what is the symbolism of of that for you with uh, the transition from the name you have for your Instagram, the name you have for your website? Is there is there something to that? Well, when I created my own brand, because I do branding, mm -hmm. I created and and I thought it was boring just to use my name. Uh, so. It's very simple. When I was baby, I couldn't pronounce Diana, so I used to say, "What?" They, they used to say, "What's your name?" I used to say, "Nana." <laughs> <laughs> so, 
did. And then my, my family, just my very close family of close friends, they call me Nana. Uh, oh, so wonderful. I said, I, I really like the N-A-N-A -N -A and how you can play around with the logo to it. It's very simple and very graphical. So I just uh, choose that because it had a, like a pretty background and it has a, a pretty way to set it up and change it. Yeah. And Excellent. it's short. Remember, and some, for some people it means grandma and some other people means a tea in Israel. <laughs> you know, so it, I, a lot of people bring the conversation to that name. So it's just oh, fun. Very good. Well, it sounds like it was a good choice. It allows for a good conversation maker. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing you had alluded to earlier, we were talking about the difference between originals and prints. So the, is the work that you're generally showing in galleries, is it more like the work I saw that was multidimensional as a, as a hand cut, handmade, than the pieces that you can then also, you also turn that into a digital image that can then be a print at the same? Yes, exactly. Well, it's the other way around. I created the the piece digitally and it's flat if, if you touch it, you know, but if, if you see it, it's not flat. <laughs> uh, it has a lot of damage. But uh, the original, I really want to put my hands on the original, not just a, a beautiful paper and a very expensive printer. But mm -hmm. uh, so having my thoughts, my time, um into this piece and my soul to my original pieces so that's why i'm i'm you know creating something else a little more than that i already did you know got it got it okay that i, I like the difference there that you're touching it you're you're making some modifications from the print you make on the computer yes. in order to make it more sculptural to have it more of a life to it that is unique so that someone who wants an original piece, they have a piece that speaks to them that way. And then you have the, the digital images that were, the, were sort of the original idea, but not the original hand cut and hand derived modified yeah. version. Yeah. And then people collect art and they, it's just nice to have your own original piece that nobody else has, you know? So yeah. it's, it's that's that's part of the art uh, scene that that uh, necessity of belonging and this is only mine <laughs> we human humans we have those feelings a lot so i i ha i i want that too you know when i collect some art i just i want the original piece for me if i can afford it yeah. um you, you know but uh i know and uh, as i know that sometimes it's difficult to to invest in art for some people, um, I also did some more um, uh, flexible and uh, pieces of uh, prints for people to have pretty, play, uh, you know, showing in their walls or a good reminder for something that they think. What about this uh, beautiful piece behind you that we haven't heard about yet that's got the, the pink at the top? Can you tell us about that? This one? Yes. This one oh, is just a, a really, really simple, but it's a, it's a thought and it just worked really well together. Oh. So it's a hand, uh, you know, with a rolly. <laughs> it's in the center. And it's a butterfly. And the, the rolly, we were playing a game with friends and I, I rolled tobacco into this, you know, really good tobacco into, I, I made the, the cigarettes and every cigarette had a message. So we were kind of like playing the game, of, oh, what I'm gonna get. So it was really fun moment with friends at a party. Nice. And she pulled out the, the one that says, um, let go. Can you, can you read it? Uh, love. It's let go. <laughs> okay yeah oh sorry it's move on i'm so sorry it's move, move on. on okay so then yeah. this butterfly you know butterflies fly and they move on mm -hmm. <laughs> and it right. was perfect on the body of the butterfly and it's just a fun piece and very colorful yeah. just a good reminder for people not to get stuck in 
move on, have a party on. with your friends. <laughs> move on, have a party, have a good time. Yes. Let the butterfly be your metamorphosis of transformation and to and and have that connection with others. Such yes. great like continual thread that you have through each piece that mm -hmm. is is so they're they're so touching, you know, they they really seem like personal meaning and having that intentionality with your work is is extremely important to you. Yes, it is. It is for me. It's always my pieces have always a title. And uh, the, the title can explain more if you don't understand my piece. Mm -hmm. I think a lot about the title. And sometimes I have the title first. <laughs> oh, that, that's nice. That's a, yeah. That is a way to go by using the title as your muse, as your jumping point into where you're yeah. going to take your work and then let the work kind of evolve on its own based on the title that you're going from. So what's next for you? What's next for me? Keep exploring. I have created so many pieces uh, that I, sometimes I I go again and, and, and touch and kind of like, I think right now, I mean, I create a lot of new pieces. I, I think I can create, like I can do, I have tons. So right now my, my next point is just curating whatever I create uh, in the past two years and touching these pieces and creating some original and putting more hands on, collecting leaves, maybe some dead animals, insects. <laughs> if you guys can help me. <laughs> so That's probably um, something that could be a, something very personalized for a commission or whatnot, for someone to be like, these objects, I want these objects within the artwork, you know, right? na nature or personal. It's a it's such a nice like transition that that connects the the story or a person's per personal purview of what's important to them. Yes, yeah. So that's that's my next phase. Keep creating, using more of my hands, uh, bringing nature to my art uh, for real, uh, not only digital. And just uh, yeah, that is gonna bring me outdoors. That is gonna. Um, set the table, make a mess with paint and cut and paste, creative using my hands and not the computer and maybe teaching my kids that we can do that too. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. How many kids do you have? I have two kids, uh, 15 Excellent. and two boys. Are they, are, they making, are they making art like you as well? Are they inspired by your work? Well, you know, this age is difficult, but they're definitely creative, very creative. My little one helps. He's my curator. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I'm doubting about something that I create. I show it to him. He's like, yes or not. Mm -mm, no, I don't like He's so on. Yeah. I love him. And he's yeah. always on. <laughs> yeah, so, the young, yeah, yeah, the younger teenagers can be very brutally honest with their perspective. Oh, uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it can be helpful. We don't want it to crush us, but yes, it could be extremely helpful to help the guide for sure. The awful truth than somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> <I forget. laughs> yeah. Well, it's been an extreme pleasure to spend the last half hour with you and learning about your process and the importance of the imagery that you work with and, and how you how you make your work, what influences you, and to see so many beautiful examples. And I do really appreciate, um, Diana, what you've shared Thank with us on this interview. Um, any last thing you'd like to share personally or about your, any, your work or your process and um, results? Well, I'm, I'm very, uh, this whole process, um, being more focused on my artist career has, bringing me a lot of joy and a lot of self-discovering. So if you're hesitating out there to do the things you like, please don't do it anymore. Move on, get your hands on things you like. And that's what I, that's my personal journey. That's why I want to um, share to people so I can inspire or help. Well, that's yes. wonderful for us to have the inspiration for self-discovery for those like for those that are feeling stalled or stagnant, have that yes. artist within them. I think Deanna yeah. is, is making a very clear, um, clear motive of 
get out there and do and make what you're meant to do so that your life feels fulfilling and you're feeling you can have that satisfaction of of creating with your hands whether you get dirty whether it's ugly whether it's awesome it's all part of the process of growth <laughs> yes yes i know and just never give up you know never i have give my up. own and just keep going <laughs> Oh, so good. So good. Well, thank you very much. And again, we tell us your website one more time. It's Nana Studio, N-A-N-A Studio.com. All right. And you can visit Diana Gracida on Instagram and yeah. please give you. us some feedback. All right. Well, thank you very much. Extreme pleasure. And I, I look forward to seeing more of your work as it develops. Lovely. Thanks. And I have a lot of fun stuff in Instagram if you want to follow me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Definitely will. Excellent. Take care. Gracias. Okay. Thank you. Por supuesto. Bye. Okay. Gracias. Bye. Bye.